to the proceedings of day three at Dhaka Media Summit 2022, jointly organized by the Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh, and International Association for Media and Communication Research, IAMCR Bangladesh. As I mentioned earlier in this session, my colleagues at the Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh, and Khulna University, Bangladesh, are going to present their insights on technology and the future of Bangladeshi journalism. And uh, there is another specialty about this panel that uh, this is almost full panel uh, present at the studio for the first time. Uh, this is an online conference, but still uh, we have this uh, panel here uh, at the studio. So the panel will be chaired by Dr. Abdul Kabil Khan, an assistant professor in the Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. We have three papers in the panel uh, presented by Mahmoud Roshid, Adil Sadhusan Dudul, and Tania Sultana. Before I hand over the session to the panel chair, I'd like to introduce him to the audience. Dr. Abdul Kabil Khan is currently working as an assistant professor at the Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh, ULAB. He is the author of the country's first complete mobile journalism book, Mobile Journalism, Journalism of Our Time, and co-author of the journalism manual, Social Mobile Journalism. Dr. Khan has trained more than 1,000 journalist development workers and journalism students in Bangladesh and abroad. He was a speaker at Asia's first international mobile journalism conference in Bangkok in 2019. Without further ado, I would like to request Dr. Abdul Kabil Khan, the chair of this session, to take over from here and conduct the session. Dr. Kabil. Uh, thank you, Dr. Barbak, uh, for uh, doing such a wonderful job uh, for the last three days and, uh, and give us the space to conduct our first ULAB research uh, panel uh, and uh, we will going to talk about the technology and the future of Bangladeshi journalism. And uh, if you allow me to give the background of today's, uh, you know, uh, panel session. So, you know, the news industry around the world is, are experiencing a paradigm shift from traditional to digital first and in a multidimensional way. And today we cannot uh, discuss or define modern journalism without the evaluating the fundamental impact of mobile devices and social media platforms. And these are the two aspects of communication technologies have already transformed news reporters' daily responsibilities and have already transformed news reporters' daily responsibilities and forced news organizations on how they will plan, produce, and publish their content. In this context, most news media organizations have undertaken a process of restructuring their workflows and tools to try maximize productivity. And the experience of Bangladesh's news industry is no exception to the particular phenomenon. But little is known about it despite the transformation has affected the industry in various ways. Over the last few years, there has been a growing interest in the study of the impact of digital technology on journalism and mass media among the researchers. How do modern news organizations in Bangladesh adopt the mobile first approach in their newsrooms? How to integrate mobile technology on news gathering, processing, publishing, and audience engagement? Or how Bangladeshi private television channels have managed to shift themselves and maintain their presence in the cyberspace through developing websites and social media pages? Does the media convergence bring any significant changes in the content production process? Or what kind of barriers and challenges the district correspondents of Bangladesh are facing while practicing journalism? And how are they mitigating those challenges? In this session, the panelists will talk about the technology and the future of journalism by connecting them like mobile journalism, digitization of private television channels, and the challenges of district correspondents while adapting digital first approach. In the first paper that investigates the impact of mobile journalism in journalism professions of the Kulna city-based regional news outlets and their challenges while adapting mobile journalism workflow. The second paper examines the digital transformation or so-called media convergence of the private television channels, especially in their content production process. And the third paper describes the barriers and challenges 
the district correspondents of Bangladesh are facing when they practice journalism. And today we have a number of speakers with us. Uh, uh, we have uh, Mamunur Rashid, who already have joined with us from uh, Kulna. Uh, so if I give a short uh, description about his background, Mr. Mamun is currently working as uh, an assistant professor at the Kulna University, and he received his honors and masters in mass communication and journalism from the University of Dhaka. And in 2016, he joined as a lecturer in mass communication and journalism discipline at Kulna University. Uh, and now he's working as an assistant professor since 2018. Uh, he has been working in various uh, you know, fields of uh, media, communication, and journalism. And his research interest, uh, new media technology, communication, social media, and so on. And then we have with us Nandita Tabasum Khan, who has been working for last eight years uh, in journalism profession as a teacher and educator. Um, he start, she has started his career from the Stanford University, then she moved to University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh, and um, she is very well known face in the research area, especially in film uh, and info, infotainment industries. And, uh, uh, she, and she also published a number of research articles and, uh, and books also as well. Uh, and then we have Dilshad Hussain Dodul, uh, who is uh, currently a senior lecturer at the Department of Media Studies and Journalism at the University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. Um, and uh, before joining at ULAV, Ms. Um, Dilshad, uh, she worked at Stanford University, Bangladesh, and, um, and she also worked uh, at different news outlets in Bangladesh, including the English Daily New, new Ways, and she were also worked at television uh, channel and uh, also radio station as well. And, and she basically works in communication development, especially the C4D areas. Uh, she also has a number of research articles that she published from different peer review journals and so on. And, and, and finally, we have uh, Tania Sultana, uh, who is currently serving and working at uh, Stanford University as an assistant professor at the Department of Journalism and uh, Media Studies. Uh, she joined there as a lecturer in 2012, then moved as an assistant professor in 2014. And before joining at SUV, she also worked as a staff reporter at National uh, Daily, uh, the New Nation. And she also um, has an interest uh, in the research areas. And she is also a fellow of Bangladesh Film Archive. So welcome, uh, ladies, in our. Um, very interesting um, uh, research panel, and the first research panel at ULAF, and, uh, and also welcome to our uh, very gentleman from the Kulna, uh, remotely he joined with us. Uh, so um, if we go to our protocol, uh, then I would like to invite first Mr. Um, Mamunur Rashid, uh, who will present uh, the paper, Impact of Mobile Journalism on Traditional Journalistic Approaches in the Southern Part of Bangladesh who are myself also uh, a presenter but, and co-author as well. But uh, as I'm a moderator, I'm not going to present. So I would uh, request and, and, and humble request to Mamun, please take the floor and uh, you know, present your paper. Thank you. Um, I'm audible now? Yes. Uh, thank you. Today's uh, session chair, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ab Abdul Kabil Khan Jamil. Thank you for giving for me chance to present my paper. I would uh, like to share my present uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, did you see my yes. uh, presentation? Yes, it's visible. Paper? Yeah. Can I start? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, again, thanks. The topic uh, we have conducted a research on the impact of mobile journalism on traditional journalistic approaches in the southern part of Bangladesh. Me and uh, my 
colleague, Dr. Abdul Kamil Kabil Khan, uh, is the honorable uh, co-author of this paper, and I am the co-author of this paper. Uh, background. Uh, today, uh, mobile, journal, mobile technology shapes the way journalists tell their stories and way news outlets reach out to the world, though a wide area of social media channels. You know, we are the living in the uh, ultra-modern technology age. That's why Facebook, Twitter, these are the very vital social media are in cross of every day. Uh, they provide a different kinds of uh, news and these uh, news uh, productions are taken by the uh, media. The ongoing evolution of mobile technology has changed this course of mass media transformation in many ways. That's why mobile phones are various platforms of digital tools are able to prove successful communication with its readers and audience, though promoting new and innovative content and communication capabilities. Mobile phones and various platforms of digital media were able to prove successful communication with reader and audience. These are the introductions of my uh, study. Also, user-generated content, you know, UGC is the mostly common used in this uh, platform, is floating around the social media, which are often the exclusive breaking news stories around the globe, and the trajectory is only going to increase. Mojo. 2.0 newsroom concept is a mobile based distributed a newsroom model which would allow great, greater emphasis on the reporters and content creators. Uh, like many other parts of the world, internet penetration in uh, and mobile subscriptions in Bangladesh rapidly increased over the last couple of years. For example, mobile phone subscription in Bangladesh, the total number of mobile phone subscribers has reached 181.02 million at the end of the December 2021. This huge number of mobile subscribers are mostly uh, spent their time on uh, surfing the social media. That's why the mass uh, that's why the mobile journalism picks this uh, this uh, this time uh, the penetration of internet and smartphone has brought a significant impact on traditional journalism landscape across the country especially in regional parts of bangladesh due to limited budget and uh, easy accessibility smartphone is now the primary tool to practice journalism for thousands of journalists in Khulna city, the southern divisional city of Bangladesh. Here, local journalists with equipped mobile phones and additional gears have seen together uh, uh, process and distributed journalistic stories for their greater audiences. Motivation of this study, why we, why we motivate to uh, do this study? Mobile journalism brings tremendous facilities in practicing journalism located in the aids of the remote corner of the country. The main aim of this study is to explore the impact of integration of mobile journalism in the news gathering, processing, and distribution, and audience engagement practices in the regional newspaper of Khulna City, southern part of Bangladesh. That, that's why we motivate to start this study. What are the objectives of our study? We have chosen three objectives to do our uh, to proceed our study. The first one is what is the impact of integration of mobile journalism in news gathering, processing, distribution, and audience engagement practices in Khulna? The second objective of our study is how does the integration of mobile journalism affect the journalism professions of the Khulna-based regional outlets? And the number third of our uh, objective is what kind of challenges journalists are facing while adapting mobile journalism or follow? These are the three objectives of our study. Media landscape of Khulna city. Khulna is a divisional city and it is situated in the southern part of Bangladesh. According to the Department of Films and Publications in February 2022, at present in Khulna, there are 26 daily newspapers published every day. Besides, there are 30 weekly and four quarterly and eight monthly newspaper published regularly. Furthermore, the people of the, in this area are news concert person. There are some newspaper in Khulna city are very old. These are the uh, media landscape in Khulna. Understanding mobile journalism, news gather, process and distribute. 
expert from different countries defines mobile journalism differently. The most popular among them were given to Jane Chapman and Mary Kinsey. The, they consider mobile journalists to be those who use portable electronic devices such as smartphones or tablets to collect, edit and distribute text and multimedia content. They also always have a laptop and a video camera with them, which, all, which allows uh, them to quickly edit and send material to the editorial office. Therefore, they are sometimes called a backpacker journalist. Modern digital media, known as the, known as basically the smartphone journalism, uh, have a common component tool for disseminating information. As it comes in, many media experts have already proven that the future uh, will be mobile, and this is truly changing the trends of uh, today's journalism. Along with this increasing number of mobile applications, journalism, training, and media development institute are shifting their focus to proving courses in mobile journalism and mobile content production for local citizen media. If we see the practice of uh, mobile journalism in Bangladesh, uh, in uh, 2012, a trend was set for the news outlets of Bangladesh. It was the first time that a mobile journalism workshop was held uh, for newspaper journalists in uh, Bangladesh. The leading uh, Bangladeshi newspaper, Prothamalo, has hosted a three-day workshop on mobile journalism from July 26 to 28 at their head office in Dhaka. Purthamalo in the process of establishing the largest number of largest mobile journalism network in Bangladesh trade, 132 journalists around the country to shoot, edit, and publish content straight their smartphones. And, and the country's reputed media like Prothamalo, bdnews24.com, sharabangla.net, Bangladesh Times, Jomuna TV, Dhaka Post, and a few more online and TV channels have been trying to implement the mobile journalism strategy in their workflow. These are the uh, scenario of Bangladesh. Yeah. There are interesting uh, advertisement uh, which they are looking for journalists only who are expert in mobile journalism. These are the uh, uh, these are the common advertisement in our uh, country. News consumption. News in, is a mobile phone. Mobile uh, devices are becoming the dominant platform for news consumption. This uh, mobile majority has uh, out, news outlets rethinking how websites are designed and how the content look on mobile devices because that's likely how people are going to consume it. News is social. Rather than it directly typing in the web address, people are uh, being led uh, to news websites by social media. The trend is for uh, people to first hear about news by social media and then engage with content by sharing, tweeting, or commenting. Information technology and uh, its impact on journal, uh, journalism. If we see, uh, information technology has affected journalism as a whole. It has altered the way people process and receive this information. We are not waiting for the uh, morning to get uh, the newspaper and to read the, uh, all the incidents uh, which uh, had event the, the day after before. That's why we are uh, looking for news at every time, at every second. By uh, using this uh, technology, similarly, it's influenced the way journalists perform certain functions related to their job. If we see the people are getting news of, from the social media at this, uh, at the same time, the journalists are trying to send uh, these types of news uh, uh, you know, with the help of uh, this uh, technology. Methodology. Uh, we have uh, used in our methodology, this is a, a common uh, quality research method we have used in our uh, research. Using in-depth uh, interviews as a research method has assisted in clarifying the findings more uh, validity. Oh, we uh, use uh, uh, purposive sampling techniques uh, that had adapted to reach out 20 to 25 journalists who are currently working in regional outlets. Uh, uh, they are the reporters, desk reporters, news editors from both uh, print and online news outlets. This study implied uh, thematic analysis to analyze the data collected, focus, group discussion, and in-depth interviews. Theoretical framework, we have uh, a 
we have got the help of uh, two theoretical frameworks the first one is uh, diffusion and innovation and the second one is uh, digital advancement uh, te technology these are the uh, theoretical framework of my uh, study results and findings today journalists can't wait for a news broadcast a morning newspaper or even uh, a web story to deliver the latest information about a story because the audience expects information in a real time that means uh, when the incidents happens they want to uh, get the news at the instant time across the multiple platforms journalists must share tidbits of information as they report from the field this new workflow sometimes creates a new hardship for journalists working at mainstream media outlets as more and more uh, audiences consume news online causing traditional journalists for, to transform them for the fastest uh, growing digital platforms they should work now as a multitasker and able to create a newsy content with a smartphone the rise of mobile journalism is a concern for traditional equipped based journalists in Khulna the young journalists have managed to adapt with new workflow of journalism while the old age journalists have been struggling in their adaptation this is the common scenario um, in Khulna city challenges of adapting more journalism strategy in the regional newsroom in Khulna not all news organization still has a mobile journalism strategy uh, so many of them are not aware of the journalism format here are a few notable challenges like a proper training insufficient uh, digital and mojo kits poor mobile internet connectivity mindset and attitude insufficient investment and ethical violations results we have uh, got a very interesting results uh, from our fi uh, uh, findings uh, even reporters in regional surface are no longer factor in the print product they are writing a story the reporter's goal is to uh, get content up online as quickly as possible mobile devices have brought the major challenges the regular journalistic workflow in the newsroom as well as the duties and responsibilities of today's journalists the Khulna city news publishers are giving more priority to deliver quality content that can be easily accessed by audience on mobile devices, online platform and in social media space. Local news outlets are slowly moving in the adaptation of uh, mobile journalism, though they are still struggling in functioning at full capacity. The news websites and the other traditional platforms are increasingly becoming the secondary places to publish information that's because of facebook youtube and instagram uh, are the gateway where people are exposed to journalist work ads and news outlets conclusion the khulna city based uh, news outlets must adopt a mobile journalism strategy to bring in the productive impact in the practice of journalism the editorial offices can reimagine how news is reported and in how journalists can perform faster in this ever changing media landscape. The news outlets should take the initiative to empower their journalists to adopt mobile journalism approach in their reporting process. Journalists should know how to use their smartphone to capture photo, video, or audio clip as well as edit this on the go. They are the multimedia journalists, not just writers. Thank you, everyone, everyone for uh, your kind passion uh, to hear my presentation. Uh, if you uh, do you have any question, you can ask me. I will try to answer uh, on the ba base of my study. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mamun, for your wonderful presentation and in insightful uh, yeah. Uh, enough uh, informations that you have done in your study. Um, yeah, you have pointed out uh, rightly in the study uh, that uh, we are now, you know, uh, passing times in such a in a such a such a way that we can't even predict for the tomorrow, as the technology is constantly changing and the whole journalism is also changing. Uh, you know, in terms of the advancement of the communication and technology. So um, we will definitely uh, discuss further. And uh, hopefully there will be some questions from the participants uh, end, uh, but we will uh, do it in a later one uh, when there will be a question and answer session. Uh, so please remain with us uh, and we will come back to you again. All right, so thank you, Mr. Mamun, for the presentation.
All right, so now uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our next panelists uh, where we will uh, listen um, um, Ms. Nandita Tabassum and, uh, and Dilshad. Uh, they will be presenting digital transformation of private television channels of Bangladesh, uh, impact on content and revenue generation. Please, uh, you may proceed. Thank you, sir. Um, welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to present the, uh, our research on behalf of our team. So uh, can I see the presentation? Okay, so um, we have decided to understand how actually uh, the digital performance, uh, digital uh, transformation happened you know, in, uh, and how our private television channels have accepted or, you know, adopting the changes, you know, digitalization, you know. Um, so that is why we decided to uh, do this research. Our objective was to understand how private television channels of Bangladesh have adopted the shifting content wise, as well as revenue generation wise, um, which means that we will discuss about how the content of the private television channel and their website has been have been changing. And as well as is uh, these uh, changes of content actually created impact on revenue generation or not okay so uh, we actually have decided to do this research on basis of two theory first one is journalistic convergence model um, it's a theory by henry jenkins and von rimscha and second one we have adopted as convergence con continuum model yeah, it uh, that this theory has been uh, this theory has been given by Larry Daly, Laurie Demo, and Mary Spillman. Uh, the reason we have taken this theory, uh, this both of this theory, because uh, both of these theory actually explains how the convergence should happen, you know, and how the television or, or uh, the other media outlet, outlets should uh, pick that pick digitalization, you know, to convert themselves to a digital one. So we have two research question in our mind while we are doing this research. First one is, do the journalistic convergence model reflects to the shifting of private television channels of Bangladesh towards digitalization? And the second one was, uh, how does the convergence conti, uh, continuum model, sorry, uh, how does the convergence continuum model works for Bangladeshi TV channel? So through our research, we are actually going to see that how our if Bangladeshi television channels are following the media theories of convergence or not. Next slide, please. So we did, uh, we uh, conducted inter in depth interview with 16 television professionals, uh, which 10 news editor and six program producer from nine television channel of Bangladesh. And uh, I want to, uh, I want to add here that all the nine television ch uh, channels where we have chosen the first nine, you know, TRP based. So uh, that was our sampling. So uh, yeah, and also we have um, we have picked convenience sampling to select interviewees. Uh, as we all know, that convenience sampling ac actually give us scope to pick journalists and pick interviewees um, we, who are convenient to interview. So and our questionnaire was semi-structured and open-ended question so that interview can give uh, explain uh, not give answer rather than explain the situation of television. Okay, so first uh, that we all know that journalistic convergence uh, regard according to journalistic convergence theory, journalistic convergence occurs in three steps. First, inside the newsroom, how the reporter actually, you know, adopting the technologies and how they are working with those technologies. Second, the news gathering, like the work process. And the third, the content, how the content are being designed, you know, it's for television or, you know, is it different for television or is it different for news websites or social media, how these contents are designed. So these three are the basic of journalistic convergence. Okay. So what we have found uh, in our uh, from our uh, interviews with uh, news professionals that convergence with social media actually what new convergence expect that convergence will social me uh, with social media will expand the reach of their news content distribution and also in order to prepare new audience among social media users. So newsroom convergence expect to connect more audience towards television and social media. 
okay and all of the interviewees actually admitted that the convergence of social media actually is creating new audience who were not regular audience for television. There are a lot of audience are now joining, you know, watching the television news who were not used to watch television, uh, you know, the prime news. But when this is in social media, when social media uh, of those television channels are sharing those news, even young generations and other are watching those news because of the availability of those uh, content in the mobile phone actually. And also, according to the interviews of most of the television channels, new media and traditional news are managed by the same entity. So actually, there, there is no newsroom convergence happen because though all the television channels have launched their social media pages or website, but the website and social media are managed by the same people who are actually managing the television channel, except Shomai Television, uh, and I will talk about it later. Okay, so news gathering convergence. News gathering convergence actually uh, discuss about, you know, when journalists working from mainstream media are able to work, to do work for media in various platforms, such as like that a journalist who will produce a content or a news for a television channel, he or she will be managed to uh, produce a report for, this, for their social media website as well. Uh, in this case, only two of the interviewees say that they provided training to the journalists to collect content for social media platforms. News gathering model is so partially followed according to the newsroom producers. Uh, what does it mean? That's uh, actually most of the reporters or the program called producers, they are not trained enough to produce news or program to, you know, to separately for social media. So uh, only two of the interviews say that they have trained their reporter and program producer to produce pro uh, content for social media. So, and also we have found that short version of, version of the contents which are collected for television news or program are posted in digital media platform, which means that when a television makes a news or program, there is another team who makes this program on news in a shorter version and then they produce it or then they post it on their social media or web page they don't make it separately but they actually make the shorter version of the television news or program uh, for the uh, for the previous slides we can say that actually there were partial integration for news gathering convergence not fully so for the third one, content convergence, content convergence, uh, we will call a content to be convergent where when one news item can be easily published automatically into various types of platform. So according to our collected data, the content produced for television are being posted in digital media platform, but the opposite scenario is absent. By this, which we want to mean that actually we are watching the same content what we were watching in television, rather it's, a, or even the short version of television content. So that in, it's one way flow that what we are watching in television, it's also in social media. But uh, the we, not, we are not watching that a content made for social media. It's not being shared for television. So it's not two way flows of content convergence. It's just one way flow of content convergence. Uh, but the producer of Shama Television said that television sometimes pick entertainment news made for social media to broadcast during the news time. So we can say that in Shama Television, this convergence actually happens. But uh, we did not find uh, other evidence in our other interviews. So, uh, and now I want to discuss our uh, our process process of shifting uh, shifting digitalization shifting towards digitalization by our private channel uh, on the basis of convergence continuum model. So the convergence continuum model uh, offered by Larry Dilley, Laurie Demo, and many Spillman in two thousand three. It provides a conceptual framework for understanding convergence by identifying five levels of activity among news organization. So we often call it five C's of convergence, which is cross promotion, cloning, competition. It's competition and cooperation both twice. I mean, uh, uh, and uh, jointly and content sharing and full convergence. These are the five C's of convergence continuum model. So what is cross promotion? Cross promotion happens when uh, you know use of words or images, like when television actually uh, promote the content of social media, and social media actually con uh, promote the content of television channel. I mean, when a television has a separate social media platform or website or YouTube, they actually promote their content to, through them 
or uh, also uh, that is like all cross promotion. So most of the news editors say that they promote their story trailer in social media. So especially investigative journalism, we have so many investigative uh, program in Jomuna Television, Shamai Television, ACTV, RTV, they actually promote their story tailor, program tailor through social media. So their cross promotion is happening over there. Television like Ekattu Television promotes their social media and YouTube channels in their content, vice versa. That means when they are, uh, they are uh, broadcasting television uh, report or, you know, their news program, they say that this is also available level in YouTube, you can watch it later. This is also available in Facebook, so you can watch it later. So also they are promoting their Facebook page and websites. So it's happening, integrated cross promotion is happening in Bangladesh. Cloning. So cloning is where program and news contents are always uploaded to social media, especially YouTube and Facebook, which means that the same news is actually, you know, the same news made for television are actually uh, are being uploaded in the same um, in the social media pages and website of the same television channel. So this is stage occurs regularly with with the TV outlets and um, though we have so separate social media content, social media, but often we do not see separate social media content by many television channels. So uh, they actually uh, do cloning and same contents with a little editing goes on the social media outlets. So cloning is ha also happening in Bangladeshi television channels. Co-petition. Co-petition is the stage when converged media partners cooperate and compete with each other at the same time or when collaborating. So uh, in this case, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, most of the television, uh, television has launched their websites and uh, their social media pages in seven or eight years back. And it's, st it's still in their primary stage, you know, to grab the market. So there is no competition between those two platforms. Like if Shamai Television or Ekattu Television or Masranga Television has a social media platform or website, they do not actually compete with their own website or social media. They try to cooperate uh, by sharing their content and other materials. So according to the respondents, digital media platforms are comparatively new initiatives, what I have said, and it's now just uh, and it's already creating impact and revenue generation. So they are thinking that it will compete in future. Uh, they are gazing so. So content sharing, as I have said before, that according to the collected data, the content sharing in one way from TV outlet to social media. You know, the TV outlet produce contents and they share it to the social media. So um, also, the, the as we have discussed it already, the content sharing is a one way flow, but uh, often uh, that uh, they do not share the contents from social media, which are being made from social media. So content sharing is one way flow. It's not the whole convergence. So what's the stage of full convergence? So in the full convergence stage, media that work together produce content and topic collaboratively by leveraging the strength strengths of their represent, uh, respective media platforms. As the social media platforms are not separately managed or fully independent in the most cases, the full convergence is yet to achieve in Bangladesh. Thus, the revenue is also integrated, not separately calculated for media outlets. What we want to say about what we want to uh, uh, mean by this that we are uh, we are still far from an integrated convergence media, you know, in Bangladesh because uh, the revenue does not, you know, the uh, the channel does not collect revenue separately, or they uh, they are trying to create. More, there are so many channels who are trying to create a new um, a team to for websites a separate team for website to produce content in website but uh, it's uh, it's under process so uh, the full convergence is not happening in bangladesh but um, we believe that soon we will have uh, we will see those that convergence so our final slide is about what is the impact on revenue generation most of the interviewees admitted that new media actually has started shrinking the windows for revenue generation for television. It's like, you know, it's giving sort of a threat to television that, you know, we are, uh, we are going to grab your market for advertisement. But still, advertisers are cutting their budget for TV advertisement and investing more for new media. You know, so according to the program producer of ETV and Masranga TV, major portion of the audience in social media are from young generation. 
Therefore, some products are investing more to social media platform than television. But television is still generate more revenue than social media platform as the decision makers like their parents of the young people, uh, the families, they are still TV audience. So they depend on the advertisement they have they are seeing in television. So and the last uh, findings we have got that according to the program producer of Art TV and Shama Television, they say that television has to find new ideas for revenue generation if television want to save themselves from, you know, cutting budget and other things. But television has to do it through social media platform. So television has to adapt digitalization if they want to sustain um, revenue generation wise and content wise in future. Thank you so much. And I welcome question after that session, if you have any question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Dilshad, for your wonderful presentation and very interesting findings that uh, you have managed to pull out from the ground, especially uh, the private television channels and the, all the mainstream media who is, is struggling in this COVID period. And they are losing the revenues and they are you know, uh, losing the market shares so so many things are happening and you have managed to bring those uh, findings so thanks for your presentation and uh, definitely we'll come back to you again uh, with questions i also i myself have some questions to you so we'll have a discussion later on so well so it's my humble pleasure to invite our last panelist uh, to present their paper and that is also another very interesting uh, topic they are going to work and uh, they will talk about the adapting digitalization of media by district correspondents of national media outlets of Bangladesh challenges and scopes. And uh, they will be presented bothly, uh, Dilshad and Tanya Sultana. So please, uh, the floor is yours and you can proceed. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for giving me the floor. Uh, we made our slide based on our findings, mainly uh, interaction. From Kangal Hurinal to Monazatuddin or to this Tipu Sultan demonstrated the importance and the depth of it, the, the uh, depth of its scope and challenges of grassroots journalism. Excluding Dhaka and Chittagong, the district representatives are presenting the whole of Bangladesh. Since the fourth industrial revelation, the process of creating news as well as uh, audience reception has changed dramatically. Traditional media has already adopted the process of digitalization. Interactive social media, as well as the idea of backpack journalism, have brought new challenges and scopes to the district level journalists. 
And um, here is our uh, research questions. Uh, what types of demographic people are involved as district level journalists? What kind of technical support and training are needed to all the district correspondents? How technology changes their professional life? Which challenges and barriers they are facing with the advent digital era? What are the scope of new technology in district level journalism? But uh, if we want to focus our study, we will focus on two uh, research questions majorly or mainly, that is how technology changes their professional life and what are the main challenges they are, um, uh, uh, they, uh, they are facing and we will find how to mitigate the challenges and barriers to um, adopt uh, a, new, a new process of digitalization and to develop their skills um, uh, method. Primarily, this study is, is a quantitative initiative to collect and process the data. It adopts descriptive survey method. It includes 10 old popular traditional media which have launched their online version earlier in the history of Bangladesh. Um, it includes uh, five national dailies, two um, news and entertainment based television channels, and three 24 uh, hour uh, news channels. Um, uh, primarily, we expected uh, to collect, uh, uh, collect data from 100 district level journalists, uh, uh, but finally, we uh, got 90% uh, responses uh, from them. Uh, there is a plan to take uh, in-depth interviews from news editors level, and also uh, we will uh, do some KIP interview, um, KPI interview uh, from media professionals and trainers. So here is our findings. Um, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, we show some democratic uh, the demographic characteristics of our district level journalists. Uh, majorly, uh, if we see our uh, graphs, we will find seventy five percent of our district level journalists are below uh, uh, below forty. If we see their age. And uh, about 50% uh, of them are uh, between 30 to 40, and only 9% of our district level journalists are um, have uh, um, have crossed uh, their uh, 50. 90% district correspondents uh, have their bachelor's degree, and uh, only 9 to 10% of them um, uh, uh, of them uh, did not get their bachelor's. Uh, then, um, uh, if we um, uh, see our demography shows age and education is not a barrier to adopt or to develop uh, new skills or new technology, as some research shows um, shows us that uh, 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 age um, uh, young uh, youngsters are um, uh, youngsters uh, have easy access. Uh, to the new uh, uh, new technology to develop their new skills. Responsibilities, 98% respondents informed that they have <laughs> that they have to collect news, which means still the major responsibilities of district level journalists is to gather news. Greater portion are now in way to coping up the new situation also. About 70% of them have to deliver news contents or um, uh, for their recruiting media's online version, near about 40 to 60 percent of journalists informed that they have to take photos, videos, and edit them as well. Contents. Uh, besides covering daily events, around 51 percent journalists have to make multimedia contents. 63 to 68 percent journalists have to stand in front of the camera for uh, making package or uh, giving light uh, for their house. Okay. Training. About 62% journalists revealed that they did not get any kind of trainings or workshop from their uh, houses. Only 32 respondents have got some trainings. However, the graph says even these small group of journalists did not get received a set of trainings or comprehensive trainings to learn the technology or coping up with a new language of digital journalism. Um, only 40 journalists responded 
to this question, uh, to the question, um, uh, to the question uh, uh, where um, about uh, about uh, getting devices uh, from their houses like smart uh, smartphones, laptops, um, uh, recording systems, tripod. Um, uh, they uh, they told us that forty journalists um, get some uh, devices, and uh, which suggests that around fifty organization uh, did not. Um, around 50 of our journalists did not get any kind of logistic support and only 40 journalists um, uh, journalists got some support nevertheless among the 40 journalists are probably less portion to get a complete support system challenges 71 respondents informed that they have to ensure numerous responsibilities at once mm -hmm. that means um, uh, they are facing a new challenges um, earlier they had to um, gather some news or uh, just uh, sometimes they have to take some photos but their job is now becoming multitasking day to day day by day um, um, they have to prepare a lump of things within a shorter period uh, because uh, at the analog uh, analog era they got enormous time to complete their task but they have to complete their uh, task promptly recently uh, half of them agreed to the point of facing problem of accumulating advanced technology and to absorb and to get training is a uh, and uh, to uh, get training to develop their skills um, uh, learning uh, uh, new things uh, of uh, journalism benefits uh, rapidity is the topmost mesmerizing advancement of the new technology 80 percent journalists informed that they can publish or broadcast their report promptly uh, so these uh, uh, features of um, new technology um, is fascinated by our district level journalists uh, backpack journalism is additional option almost 50 percent people responded on this point they like that uh, they can manage so many works so many tasks single-handedly so uh, they see uh, this feature as benefits as well as uh, as i discussed uh, our um, uh, major journalists uh, uh, also pointed these feature as challenges but they also uh, pointed this feature as benefits as well okay slide scopes 93 percent respondents uh, post their published news content to their social media account account 68 percent journalists say they give opinion on their local issues which have public interest initiative um uh, initiative they actually demanded they demanded uh, trainings they demanded um uh, demanded satisfactory wages 90 to 92 percent of, uh, of our respondents um, um said um they don't get necess uh, necessary and training in regular basis if they get uh, training uh, regular basis they can improve um, uh, they can improve uh, their skills and they can contribute their house more efficiently. 23% of journalists uh, also told that um, uh, their salary has been increased after, um, after uh, this convergence, their salary also increased, but uh, a large amount of portion uh, said they don't get any um, economic um, uh, changes um, after uh, shifting or after uh, being transformed um, their house to towards digitalization. So this uh, or these are all we have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss Tania, for presenting another uh, groundbreaking findings. Uh, of uh, the district correspondents, uh, how they uh, cope up all the challenges and adapt themselves with the ever-changing media landscape, especially towards the digital journalism. So thank you for your presentation and also thanks to your co-author, Ms. Dilshad, uh, for uh, this um, particular presentation.
Uh, well, so that's all from our panelists. Uh, they already presented their papers with three different uh, topics, but uh, somewhere all the topics are interconnected, are interconnected because we are talking about the future of journalism and we're talking about the impact of technology in journalism. And what Ms. Dilshad already, uh, she said in her presentation that she talked about the convergence of journalism. And this, then Ms. Tania talked about the multitasker, the trainings and what Mr. Uh, Rashid introduced uh, uh, in his presentation that uh, the lot of challenges are facing also the journalists working in the, in the Kulna um, regional area while they're adopting this uh, mobile technology. So very similar, uh, you know, the problems and challenges, uh, and then we need to collectively work to, you know, uh, fight among these uh, challenges. So, well, we are expecting uh, questions uh, from the audience end, and you can uh, send your question in our chat box. Uh, the chat box is open already, and uh, you can write your question, then I will pass your question to any of the panelists to whom you are addressing. Uh, well, we can continue our discussion. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce with uh, um, Mr. Mamun Rashid again, uh, who just being joined with us. Mr. Mamun, uh, he is working as an assistant professor at the Kunda University at the Department of uh, uh, Journalism and uh, Mass Communication Discipline. Um, and he talked about the, uh, the impact of mobile journalism um, in the journalistic process uh, while they are working in particularly in regional uh, news outlets in Kulna. So Mr. Mamun, um, you already talked about, you know, um, that uh, the journalists are now creating different types of content uh, for, you know, across the platforms. So what type of particular content they are creating or producing, especially for the digital platforms, the platforms which is website or social media? Uh, please un unmute yourself. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, basically, the working journalist of Khulna City, they are trying to produce uh, short videos uh, and uh, uh, just uh, the writing content on uh, digital, writing uh, stories on digital platforms, short stories, that means. And uh, they also uh, use uh, to connect with their uh, sources, even with their houses, they use a uh, WhatsApp platform and uh, WhatsApp group. When any incidents are happening in Kulna city, they are just uh, get to know with uh, this uh, types of group. And even uh, they have connected with uh, multiple platform groups. Also, they have own their platforms uh, like Facebook, even they have also their own uh, platform uh, in YouTube. When they uh, produced uh, their uh, news in traditional media, after that, uh, they uh, use their platform to publish their own news and uh, uh, one stories. And uh, uh, these are the stories uh, instantly get and shared uh, with their viewers and audiences uh, with a huge number of uh, audiences. Uh, I, I, actually, I'm trying to say uh, they use uh, the steps of platform for their own connection and uh, to produce the steps of news. Uh, they use the steps of uh, multi uh, media journalism platform. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mamun, for your uh, explanation. So, as we know, the technology is now being available, uh, especially the smartphone, and uh, and there is a trend in Bangladesh uh, that uh, you know. Uh, some people just only, uh, you know, create Facebook page or, you know, create a YouTube channel and they cover, you know, stories uh, exactly. and they publish yeah. only on social platforms, not only any particular news platforms or even any website. So what is the scenario in Kulna? Is there also the same? Uh, in this uh, Kulna city uh, is not almost a common scenario at, uh, at the capital city of Dhaka because uh, they have uh, no uh, uh, proper smartphone devices and they have no uh, high speed internet connection. That is the main uh, uh, disadvantage of this uh, journalist. But uh, there are a few journalists who are working with uh, television and uh, the online news portal, they have used their own smartphone to produce these types of news. Uh, here I mentioned the one name, uh, ATN uh, uh, Bangla television channels, uh, 
uh, SM Habib Bhai, uh, he used uh, only uh, his smartphone to produce uh, for television news. Uh, this phone only used uh, uh, for uh, news uh, producing event disseminating only he, he do that uh, all the working with only on uh, a smartphone and uh, th there are uh, three or four years back when i uh, talked to with him they used uh, these types of only phone without any laptop or without any uh, desktop they use only phone for uh, contributing uh, his uh, uh, news gathering and on the other hand, in our Khulna uh, city, there are a few uh, journal, working journalists who are uh, affiliated with a new news uh, online portal like Dhaka Post. Uh, these are the uh, pro uh, promising uh, news portals and these are the journalists who are uh, young, basically they are young generation, uh, young uh, people, uh, these guys are use their phone uh, to produce news uh, and uh, to disseminate news, uh, they use their smartphone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mamun. As uh, you are conducting your research, um, which is also focusing with the journalist, and you are, you know, um, in, have some sort of interaction with them while conducting this particular research. So, what is your observation, particularly? Is there a growing interest among the young journalists to practice journalism with the smartphone, using different, you know, gears and accessories? So, what are the changes you have noticed among the young generations who are working there? in journalism profession definitely i do believe there are 100 percent so they have uh, shows their interest uh, they have uh, if they get a proper training on mobile journalism they will uh, use uh, full facilities of their smartphone and they uh, show their eagerness and already i have mentioned they these are the people also they have own smartphone and they are also connected with all types of social media and if they get the proper training how they accumulate news with uh, the only with uh, with the help of a, a smartphone then uh, they will use uh, they will get the full uh, benefit from this smartphone but uh, lack of proper training uh, they get uh, face uh, some challenges and uh, they uh, definitely they uh, show their eagerness uh, uh, if, uh, those are the some people who are uh, old age journalists, but they are also shows their eagerness comparatively uh, the young generation also they show eagerness to adopt uh, these types of new technology because uh, the older people are not adopted with the coming technology or uh, new technology, they just get uh, afraid of these types of uses. But uh, they get us up, uh, if they get uh, some training or facilities, they will use uh, with it full volume. Yeah, thanks. Thank that's, you. that's the you know the similarity from uh, two particular research that uh, you know we have here that the proper training is required uh, exactly. to, you know exactly. to feed themselves for this digital journalism. Uh, thanks, Mr. Uh, Rashid, for your you know, conversation and discussion. So let's move to our uh, second uh, panelist. Um, uh, Ms. Dilshad, you mentioned in your uh, research uh, that uh, the, the television channels are now producing a diversity of content uh, for uh, not only just for their traditional platforms, but also for the social media. So here I have very interesting examples of what Shoma Television has been doing for last couple of years. They are producing, you know, landscape video for the television channels because it's a landscape platform. And then they cut and made the video as horizontal and upload that on Instagram, which is a mobile you know, optimized platform. So it's a very you know, uh, groundbreaking example of how the television channels are now converse and they are now producing different types of contents for different types of platforms. So that's my uh, uh, findings also from your um, research and I also following the Soma television for long days in Instagram particularly. So my question, so what are uh, the types of contents they are producing, especially for the social media, which is not broadcast in the television channels? Uh, actually, we found the same. Soma television is entirely different. 
I mean, they have their content designed for social media. They have an entire team to produce content for social media. But yeah, as per your question, uh, if I want to answer, uh, basically most of the news producer uh, told that, you know, entertainment news got more click. So if we focus on click-based journalism, they have to pick a certain types of news. Sometimes they have to give different type of headlines to those news to you know, attract more audience, to get more clickbaits. So I don't think that they have a different type of, you know, um, uh, as a different type of, uh, what should I say, that they don't pick different type of news, uh, different than television, but certainly they pick some of the news to attract more audiences for social media. Sometimes they give different type of headlines. Sometimes these are more entertainment news. And sometimes there is some news which is not published in television, more specifically, which are related to entertainment and uh, you know, lifestyle, like what we wear, what should we wear, what should we eat, even religion. You know, Shamai Television has uh, in their website, in their social media page, they have a different part which called Islamic life. You know, and they get a lot of interaction on that specific page. So it's more click based, but you won't see it in their television. So uh, that is also a thing. So I think that uh, for our website, uh, most of the television, as per our interviewees, most of the television actually uh, want to focus not only different type of news, but also those news uh, which got more. Uh, you know, interaction with people, which will get more comments, and for YouTube as well. You know, uh, even one of our uh, interviewees said that we have five incident crime report. We choose one of that and then we upload it first in YouTube. Then we like, it's not like television that one after this, this is first and this is second, not like that. They pick just one uh, report and they upload it on their YouTube. They see that, how does it go? And then they you know, upload others. So uh, the difference is actually uh, not uh, even in content. Um, the difference is which content will get more attention, I believe. All right. Thanks for your observation. So let's move forward our uh, social media, uh, you know, the conversation. So if we take an example of Jomuna Television, so uh, recently they produced a number of episodes on a particular title, Bangladesh, Bangladesh Ponchash, <laughs> when Bangladesh just, you know, uh, uh, celebrated it, our Golden Jubilees. So that means television channels are only focusing, you know, the content, you know, dedicated for the social media, right? Uh, and why they are coming to social media? Because uh, the majority traffic is also coming on from social media and people are using mobile and consume the content. So can we come a conclusion that today the whole journalism has been changed because of the two things on the mobile phone and the second of the social media? What is your observation? whole scenario is changing and what is behind this i would say mobile phone more importantly because the youth bangladesh is a country which is standing on its youth you know like more than 60 percent of our uh, of our people are now under 30 i think or now under 35 i think so and this overall this youth have almost all of them even who are not educated enough or you know who are doing um you know job which is not so they also have mobile phone and they are watching that in their social media and their websites and this is definitely the thing that the whole journalism the motive of journalism you know the picking of topic for journalism the picking uh, is actually majorly based on the you know on the traffic in social media I also believe so. So we can come to that conclusion that mobile phone, as well as uh, as well as you know, uh, uh, um, the the MB, the megabytes we are getting. Have the access to media, and they are, they are giving their opinion. So I think yeah. it's true. Yeah. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, now let's move to Tanya. Uh, as you have already, you know. Uh, Struck out number of challenges uh, for the DST correspondents who are working in this particular digital journalism. So, what would be your recommendation for the news organizations? Because we talked about that journalists they need training, they need you know the latest equipments, but then you know the news organizations they are not offering. 
So what are the recommendations, recommendations you want to put in your research, which can be implemented by the news organizations? Uh, as I already said, uh, that uh, our research is not completed yet. We just, uh, you can turn, you can unmute yourself. As I said, um, it's a uh, working paper. We did not complete it, uh, our research um, yet. But uh, the findings of, from our survey shows they need training, enormous uh, training and uh, comprehensive training. Uh, so um, uh, their house, if their houses offer comprehensive training or a set of training tools, devices, um, they can contribute more efficiently. But um, uh, I, I don't think it's the only responsibility of uh, houses. Uh, some uh, organization who are providing trainings uh, like PIB is, uh, uh, they can uh, play a vital role to um, develop their skills. Uh, so, uh, and I also uh, recommend, uh, rec uh, I also want to recommend that training is not sufficient unless they get um, advanced uh, featured a smartphone, laptop, uh, tripod, or um, uh, these kind of devices, uh, because um, uh, our discussion, um, uh, from our discussion, we already um, explored that um, uh, smartphone is um, is um, is a mesmerizing thing of uh, digital era uh, after the fourth revelation. Uh, this uh, this screen, smart, the screen of smartphone, the interactivity of social media, uh, these features um, has changed the language of journalism, the language of communication. Our audience is uh, more um, segmented than ever. Our audience uh, control has increases. Uh, so uh, these features uh, have changed our language. So. Uh, if the language has changed, then we have to uh, develop new skills. So um, I, I don't think uh, only uh, I don't think uh, the house is the only source of training. Uh, some institute uh, institute who are working with journalists they can also play a vital role to work with uh, these journalists. Yeah, thank you, Stania. Yeah, you pointed out another important uh, aspect. throughout the year, like PIB you mentioned, Press Institute Bangladesh. Yeah, I know they have, you know, several courses uh, for the journalists throughout the year, and they can play a very big role on that area. And uh, you also mentioned that, yeah, uh, not only training, so logistically and technically, they should be empowered uh, together so they can well for these digital platforms. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, our, our very, very own and you know our honorable convener is already here so i need to conclude it so um, yeah we have very interesting uh, you know discussion and we have been talking uh, for the last one half hour almost uh, about the future uh, of journalism and how technology uh, impacts and changes everything uh, the whole landscape of media in bangladesh and uh, if you just give me one or two minutes to recall who uh, have joined with us. Uh, we have Mr. Mamunu Rashid from Kunda University. Uh, we have Ms. Nandita Tawas Sunkhan from the University of Liberal Arts Bangladesh. And also we have uh, uh, Dilshad Dodul, uh, who is also from the same university, uh, the Department of Media Studies and Journalism. And also we have uh, Tanya Sultana from the Stanford University. And I myself, the moderator, also from the Media Studies and Journalism Department of the University of Liberal Arts Bangladesh. So for, with that note, I want to conclude, but don't meet us and don't you know, forget us to follow on our Facebook page and uh, our Twitter, our Twitter. So all the live actions are going uh, there. So please follow us and uh, be with us for another more day. Uh, so, and with that note, I am concluding here. And thanks, and over to Mr. Barbak. Thanks, uh, Dr. Kavil, for chairing the session. And uh, Mr. Mamunur Rashid, Dilshad Hussain Dodul, and Tanya Sultana, uh, and uh, Ms. Nandita Tabasum Khan for sharing your research insights in this panel entitled Technology and the Future of 
Bangladeshi journalism. Before I uh, proceed to the closing of day three, I must say that uh, I am really becoming a threatening face to people. And Dr. Kabil, you should not complain because uh, I have done enough nepotism. I have given you 13 extra minutes, which I did not give to anyone. Uh, so you, you, you should you know, give me a special treat that I have done this. And uh, for the others, of course, uh, uh, we need to approach the closer. It's been a long day. Uh, and uh, the long day is going to end. Uh, but uh, even though the day was long, I think the conversations were very engaging uh, at uh, our Dhaka Media Summit 2022, jointly organized by Media Studies and Journalism Department and International Association for Media and Communication Research, INCR Bangladesh. If we look back to the proceedings of day three, uh, we see identity and social media at the center of the conversations. One roundtable discussion and two research panels discussed the way mass media and social media influence the process of identity constructions and reconstructions. Also, we uh, listened to a panel that uh, devoted uh, their insights, uh, their, their uh, researches to you know, analyzing the role of social media in them. At the same time, there were discussion on the changing media scape due to the advent of technology and the way media outlets and professionals are trying to cope up with the changes brought by the digital technologies. The researchers and experts emphasized on quality content and social responsibilities of media organizations to make a more sustainable media ecology. Tomorrow, the last day of this edition of Taka Media Summit will and identity construction. We'll close the academic discussions with some cutting edge research presentations in the panel entitled, Datafication, Digital Audiences and Media Trust in Bangladesh, a research panel by the faculty members of Media Studies and Journalism Department, the organizer of Dhaka Media Summit. Let's have a look before we close our day today, let's have a look at the highlights of the last day of this edition of Dhaka Media Summit. So that was the highlights of uh, the day four, last day of this edition of Dhaka Media Summit. So, uh, good night and uh, looking forward to a very engaging last day of Dhaka Media Summit tomorrow. So until then, good night, bye-bye.